All right, ladies and gentlemen, this will actually build on the um, tiny DB tutorial posted previously. If you have not done the tiny DB tutorial, you will need to do that to get the framework uh, for what we're about to do here, which is uh, examine, examine persistent data using the tiny web DB. So what we see here is the tiny DB. Um, tutorial as we finished it previously. You can see we've got our um, note title, note, the three buttons, save, load, new note, and we've got the tiny db component. We're going to delete the tiny db component. Then we're going to add, you guessed it, the tiny web db, which is under the not ready for prime time. We'll add that. It'll drop down here. So we'll be using the tiny WebDB then to do um, sort of. Uh, we'll be accomplishing the same thing uh, that we did in the uh, persistent data tutorial previously. All right. We need to talk real quick about where the tiny WebDB stores information. Tiny WebDB uses two very simple calls across the internet. Unsecure, by the way. It does a put and a get. Get store, um, a get value, and a put value. Um, it's very simple. And it, it does those uh, to the URL that you place in the Tiny WebDB properties service URL. Um, the default is a, um, a test URL that um, the Google Dev engineers kindly uh, put up for us. Um, app, uh, let's see, app inventor tiny webdb dot appspot dot com. That is shared by everyone that um, places a tiny webdb component and doesn't customize that URL. What that means is if 50 different people go out there and do this tutorial without customizing that URL, you could get very um, um, odd results if you happen to get the same tags. So you might want to customize the tags on TinyWebDB. The other thing, of course, that you're going to want to do is create your own custom TinyWebDB uh, application. Um, there are some awesome devs out there currently working on a Java implementation, but there's a Python Im implementation that you can actually install um, on a Google App Spot. I've actually created um, my own um, custom tiny WebDB service. You can see there's some values from um, a test earlier I was doing in this. Um, this is running at my own URL. Now I'm not going to um, put that URL, URL in this tutorial because I don't want uh, everybody and their brother uh, putting data into my um, app. However, you can do it. It's fairly straightforward, and um, uh, it's a topic for another tutorial on how to create that custom tiny, tiny WebDB service, uh, but we'll cover that later. For right now, for the purposes of this tutorial, you can use um, this service URL included with the tiny WebDB component. All right, we switch over to the block editor. And we see we have a gutted version of our uh, TinyDB project. All of the calls to the TinyDB component have been removed. In the Save button click is where we save both the note titles and the title box uh, text, um, or rather the note titles from the title box text and the actual uh, note box text. We were using the TinyDB. We need to replace those with the uh, store value. Uh, from the tiny WebDB. So we're going to place two of these. The first one is going to store our um, note text. So we're going to go down to our note box and grab the note box text component and say that that's the value we want to store. Remember that we were using as a tag in tiny DB the um, title from title box text. So we're going to copy that um, and place that in there. So what this call does when the save button is clicked is it pushes out to the tiny WebDB the value in the note box text with the tag that we have entered as the title of the note. 
and remember it does that using a store a value call very straightforward call all right we also remember we're storing the um, note titles the title box text under a tag that we had created called note titles so we need another tiny webdb store value and we're going to place that in here and remember what we're storing is that list that's in the global variable slash list of note titles so I'm going to copy that and place that as the value the tag remember we had just as um, a text field uh, that we had called note titles so what this does when the save button is clicked um, after it goes to the check to see if the note title already exists in the list um, it saves the note titles across the web using a store value push and stores the entire list under the tag note titles and you recall we have a routine routine then to flush both of those with a note box text set and a title box text set to an empty text We're going to go back to our original uh, TinyDB note project uh, to look at the difference in retrieving value uh, from TinyDB as opposed to retrieving from TinyWebDB. So we're going to go back here uh, and load that project back in here. And you'll see in um, this project, we were able to retrieve data um, in the list picker after picking by simply plugging in a call to the tiny, tiny DB um, with a tag and to set the note box to that. Um, the same on the screen initialize to initialize the note titles initially we could just plug in a call to the database with the tag in it and assume that it would immediately be placed um, either in the note box text in this case or in this list that isn't the case for us with a tiny webdb for a very good reason when we make a call to the tiny webdb to get a value the call has to go out over the web and then come back to our phone and to the app so there's possibility of a delay so that delay, depending on your speed, where you are, the speed of your phone, etc., could be greater or lesser. So TinyWebDB actually has a different event. After the call is made, we can make a call to get a value. After the call is made, then we have to um, process the data when it gets here, whenever it gets here, and we do so with the got value. Now this means we're going to have to build some new logic in because we have to make the call uh, to load something when we pick a list note and then we have to process it. Remember we are going to make a call to two different tags. We're going to make a call to uh, a tag called note titles uh, to pull the titles into our variable and we're also going to be uh, pulling some random tag that we created in the title box text and we need to pull um, the note box text as well uh, using that tag so we have to process in this event both kinds of data regardless of the order in which they arrive so we know that when we want to send the call to load. So we're actually going to get a tiny webdb component get value. And we're going to plug that into the list picker. And we're going to say when the list picker has been uh, picked, when they pick a note from the note titles variable list, then we're going to send that selection to the web and say return whatever stored under that tag. And then we have to wait for that to come. And while we're waiting for that to come, we set the title box text to that title that was selected in the list picker selection. Um, and uh, then 
whatever was either last in the notebox text or perhaps nothing. It will appear to the user that there will be nothing in the notebox text because we immediately set the list picker selection title in the title box, but nothing is going to load into that note field, that note box, until the data actually gets in and we process it. So we're actually going to just place in uh, the note box text a little um, hang on for a minute text uh, to users. So we're going to take a text box and we're going to say uh, please wait loading note. And if you guys build this you'll see that this works very nicely. Uh, that the title gets placed in the list picker or rather in the title box and then uh, in the note box it says hey uh, please wait while we're loading the note and then the second that the data gets in this got value here then gets triggered and um, the got value allows us then to repopulate that um, note box with whatever the data was that was in the note 